Thanks for watching SLC TV, Salt Lake City's Government Access Channel. On July 26th, a severe weather storm hit Salt Lake City, mainly centered over the Sugar House neighborhood. I'm outside of the Sprague branch of the Salt Lake City Library, which is one of the hardest hit areas. The library is temporarily closed for repair due to storm damages. For this week's episode of Capital City News, we hear from Laura Briefer, the director of the Public Utilities Department for Salt Lake City, about the intense storm and how Salt Lake City responded. And our History Minute is about the USS Salt Lake City submarine. Let's get started with our look back. very excited that yesterday morning we started what has been, been called Operation Rio Grande. Uh, it is a three-phase operation. The first phase, which started yesterday, is an increased law enforcement presence. It's going after the worst of the worst. The first thing we need to do is disrupt the drug trade. The second phase of this is the treatment piece, and this is very important. There will be assessments that will be done. We are trying to, uh, to fund more treatment beds. We know that that has been a problem in the state for a long time. We don't have enough treatment beds for those that need help for addiction. And we're committed to, uh, to opening upwards of more than 200 beds over the next six months, which will make a huge impact. Third phase of this, increasing opportunities for work, job training, helping those people that are truly homeless, whether by choice or by circumstance, but are looking to get back on their feet and find a way to get back engaged in society. Again, tough on crime, uh, but with a compassionate outreach to those that truly need help. The Community Connection Center and the work we're doing down there as we're removing barriers and we're connecting people to services. We are here today to open the Nine Line and celebrate the West Side. We're outside of East High School, another location that was hit hard by the severe weather storm in Salt Lake City. For this week's interview, we talked to Laura Briefer, the director of Salt Lake City's Public Utilities Department, about how the city responded to this local emergency. In the early morning of July 26th, about four in the morning, a um, storm system came through the city and there was an area of very intense rainfall. And um, we had about two and a half inches of rain 
over a 40 minute period, mostly centered over the Sugar House area of the city. Um, at that time, it rained so much and so hard, um, it would be classified by the National Weather Service as a 200 year storm event. That means there's a one in 200 probability every year of an event like this happening, or a 0.5% chance of an event like this. Um, as such, it overwhelmed the storm drain and street system of the city for a period of time. Some residents were getting help from the fire department in terms of just placing pumps in their basements. A lot of basements got impacted and so some were getting help in terms of getting water out of their basement. Um, with the help that public utilities provided, you know, the first thing that we did um, was to manage the level of the Jordan River. So we were able to divert the Jordan River down the surplus canal, which is a flood infrastructure. And what that does is it reduces the level of the Jordan River. So all of the outflows from the city have space to go into the river. Um, yeah, and then we also looked at debris. We looked at storm drains, um, making sure that inlets were cleared. So a whole lot of, a whole lot of parts of that response. Um, we also had um, some of our crews respond directly to each of the homeowners that called us so that we can evaluate, you know, whether there was anything we needed to do with the drainage system at that particular location and also get a sense of what kind of damage was being, was, was at that location. No, in fact, the infrastructure behaved the way it should behave. So when we talk about drainage infrastructure for the city, and this is across the board for municipalities across the country, you're talking about different elements of the drainage infrastructure. There's the pipe, pipelines themselves and the inlets. There's curb and gutter on the streets and there's the streets themselves that act as conveyance. Um, there's also streams um, and culverts. And, and so all of the systems infrastructure was in good working order. It was clean, it was maintained. Um, and it simply just got overwhelmed at the massive amount of water that came in such a short period of time. No, our, our job is, is not over and we're in recovery mode. Um, and so, you know, the different stages of, of emergency management, there's preparation, there's response, there's recovery, and it's just a cycle that you're always in. In recovery mode, what we're doing first and foremost is we're trying to provide and connect residents with resources to help them. Those residents that have, had, have suffered damage from the event, that is primarily the reason why we issued an emergency proclamation, local emergency pro proclamation, um, so that we can try to connect with different resources. Um, we're evaluating whether there's um, a potential for a city low interest loan program. Um, we have coordinated with volunteer organizations that provide disaster relief. So those are organizations like the Salvation Army, the Red Cross, Rubicon, uh, LDS Services, um, and others. And they've been a huge help in providing some cleanup and, and other services. Um, the city's doing debris removal. That's with our, um, pub our um, sustainability division or department. Um, public Utilities is continuing to make sure that our storm drain system is operational. We're in repair mode. We had a number of um, storm drain manholes get blown off. Um, big manhole holes that were bolted into the street were just blown off the street by the force of the water. Um, there's street repair that's occurring. Um, so there's, there's a lot that's still happening and a lot that still needs to be done in order to recover. Next up is our History Minute. The USS Salt Lake City was a nuclear Los Angeles-class attack submarine that was launched by the U.S. Navy in October of 1982. It was the second vessel in the Navy to bear the name Salt Lake City and was launched by Kathleen Garn, wife of then-Senator Jake Garn. A photograph of the Salt Lake City skyline adorned a spot on the inside of the ship, offering the only window to the outside world. The sub received commendations for its vigilant efforts during the Cold War, but it was notable for many other reasons as well. Among those, actor Scott Glenn trained aboard the USS Salt Lake City to prepare for his part in the hunt for Red October, and R. Lee Ermey filmed an episode of his History Channel show Mail Call Aboard, answering questions about life on a submarine. After 23 years of faithful service, the USS Salt Lake City was deactivated on October 26, 2006, and on May 8th, 2007, it arrived at the Puget Sound shipyard to be scrapped and recycled. 
That's it for another episode of Capital City News. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next time to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest city news. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Nextdoor, and Twitter at SLCGov. For SLC TV, I'm Poonam Kumar.